we're recording. So welcome everybody to, I guess it's, it's weird, I can't welcome them to your shop, I guess you can welcome, welcome to my uh, playroom. <laughs> I'm Jordan, the Construction Foundation, also the Skills Ready Project, um, and today we've got Jesse and Trevor. So do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Good morning. <laughs> Hi, my name's Trevor. I build boats. I live here on Gabriola. I've been doing it for a while. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jesse. I'm a teacher, uh, and I like boats. You also live on a boat. Which oh, is yeah, cool. I forgot that part. I do live on a boat. That's how much I like both. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, and so thanks for being here today and for agreeing to this. And thanks for the videos. It was cool to see the actual, like, that boat is amazing. The one that you showed in the shop. It's incredible. I like the, I like the little dinghy as well. It made, it made, me, it made me think that I could uh, learn to sail. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> One of my life goals. Yeah, so um, we're going to answer some questions. We've got some questions from, from a few students, and then we've got some questions that we've talked about before, and then you guys have a demo. Um, so uh, one, of the, one of the exciting things is we got some questions yesterday from Margaret Jenkins, and so um, they had, had a few. So I just wanted to start with those questions because it's kind of exciting, and they're also really good questions that I also I hadn't thought of. So um, Trevor, you're a boat builder by training and That's Jesse correct. you're training to be a boat builder sure yeah <laughs> I'm learning <laughs> lots to learn um so how, how long have you been building boats for I've been building boats on Gabriola for over 20 years and certainly before then out of interest just did you pick it up as a hobby first or did someone you know build boats no I've always done it just out of my own interest that's cool and has it always been wooden boats yeah, absolutely. That's cool. Well, uh, with exception, I made a duct tape and code hanger wire boat one time. <laughs> Did it flow? Yeah, in the bathtub. Oh, nice. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like the duct tape would be pretty water water permeable. It wouldn't wouldn't allow a lot of... Yeah, it was a short-lived uh, short experiment. <laughs> well, it was lots of fun. It's amazing. We did uh, with, with, uh, with the grade eights from a couple different schools. I think we had with Spectrum and uh it was, it was spectrum and uh central oh maybe i'm getting the schools wrong last year we did a cardboard boat race at at um at the at the pool at crystal pool and that was a lot of fun and it was we 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 were i was very impressed there was one boat we were just waiting for it to sink for about 10 minutes and it didn't so we just they just kept floating it was amazing good yeah it's yeah it's a fun project um, and then you um you also kind of run a boat school is that what i Yes, for eight years I taught people how to build boats uh, from from nothing to a launched boat that can carry people. So yeah. lots of education in learning how to uh, assemble boats and all the principles are true to all the boats, but every style is a little different, which is great because we're all different. That's fair. How do, you, how do you mean that the styles are different? Uh, the lengths can be different, the widths, the colors, uh, whether you drive a motorboat, whether you operate it for sailing, maybe you row it, also paddling, many different styles of boats. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and like for you, what what piqued your interest? Why did you start building boats? Because I like them. <laughs> <laughs> that's completely reasonable. I think that's that's a good reason to do most things. Yeah, because once once you build it and you, you're done, it it's you put it in the water and it becomes something else. Yeah. You can go places, it moves, it, it, it's interactive. It's, it's so different than, you know, making a cube of wood, sit enough. on it on the floor. It's still a cube, but it's a boat, just... it changes. It does something else. Which, which part do you enjoy more, sailing boats or making boats? Oh no, that's <laughs> a balanced equation. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Have you ever done any big boat adventures? Um, yeah, a few of them. Yeah, where did you go? Well, um, I went out uh, in the bay and caught some crabs and came home. Uh -oh. I don't know, there's been some bigger ones. <laughs> some river trips in canoes when I was a kid and some down the coast with a 40-foot sailboat uh, outside uh -oh. San Francisco. Oh, it looks like we froze. We'll wait for you to come back. Wait, that's a long adventure. 
So uh, while, while we wait for them to come back, um, I'm going to fill time by talking about uh, the boats that I made. Um, so this, I, I don't know how many students have actually been able to build their speedboat, um, but this was the speedboat that I built uh, in the video. And so one of the things we've been testing it. Uh, there you go. One question that my son Finn actually had was how, what's the longest boat that you've ever built? Um, 52 feet, which is, uh, which is a good, good distance. You got, you got to walk from one end to the other. That's a good long distance. How big is a school bus for reference? I mm. A little feet. bit longer than that. Cool. Mm -hmm. you now the rowing shells, they get even longer than that, but they're really thin. They're really small. So boats can be really long and, and still not be a big boat and boats can be really short and be huge like tugboat tugboat yeah. yeah thank you amazing i'm i i appear that i lost uh, lost the internet for a second <laughs> welcome back thank you um so one of the questions that margaret jenkins also had was uh how do you make real boats waterproof or what do you do to make real real boats waterproof well i have a couple examples and i'd love to answer that question so um we take wood and we make it fit to the next piece of wood so tightly that when the wood swells it pinches the water out and you can't pass through the seam so i have some examples here hang on so we put planks right beside each other first we take the plank and we shape the edge off of it until it's beautiful and smooth no roughness no moves all these shavings come off which we make and then we put these two things together if we put the two planks together and we bolt them or we squeeze them with a frame the other way or we have a lot a big stack of them on the boat and when the water swells the wood this seam becomes so tight that the water cannot go in between the seam it's held together by water the water pressure from the outside and the swelling of the wood stops the water from coming in there are many examples in our lives which we've seen and heard of and i have some of those here for you today also so the wood boat is the planking under the water and the wood boat planking on the deck and it becomes a tight little egg other examples that we have here would be a water barrel. So the water barrel are tight pieces of wood fit together on their edges in the round, held with bands. And when the water makes the wood swell, it pinches so tightly that it can't get out. The seams have to be perfect. You can do that with practice. <laughs> Another example that we have in where about so I grew up in Ontario between Ottawa and Kingston, there's a Rideau Canal, uh, this one here, and they have lock gates and they maintain the lock gates made out of wood. And the wood swells and becomes so tight that the water cannot pass. You find these in Amsterdam and Gothenburg and potentially many other old timey cities. That's incredible. Here is an example of a lock gate that I've made. And so the water, you can see the boat is here and it would come along. I think we've got a friend here we can take with us. <laughs> there we go. Yep. A couple of friends. And these doors are the wood doors in a lock. These are cement walls or stone walls. And the transition of the water on this side, I'll show you, is at a different level. Oh, cool. So the wood is, becomes swollen and is so tight that it stops the water from passing by. That's how we make wood boats float, and that's how we make wood boats watertight. That's amazing. <laughs> that sounds like something that would take a lot of, a lot of practice to get, to get good at. Mm, like anything of value, we practice something and we get good at it. Okay. Amazing. I have, uh, I have another example here from a magazine. 
this is uh, this is a Japanese what's called a tub boat, and it is operating in the same fashion as the barrel, but the other way around. So the barrel I showed you keeps the water on the inside and the bands are on the outside. This has the bands on the outside to hold the wood pieces together. I'll bring it up closer. And when the wood pieces swell, then the water cannot get in. That's so cool. That's super cool. And he just, he just hang, yeah, and he just, ha he just pushes it along with an oar or how does, how do That's they get right. packed? I think, I think these are inshore fishing, so it's really shallow. And the box that he's using has a glass at the bottom so he can see to the bottom to fetch maybe shellfish or something. That's amazing. That's really innovative. Mm -hmm. The bands on this boat are made out of reed. So you can see the yellow bands in this picture and they go around and around in a braid and they're made out of natural fiber as well. Wow. Nat natural fiber swells with water and so that also becomes tighter, that Amazing. band. The metal bands do not become tighter, but those bands do. So what happens if you take a wood boat out of the water? Does it crack and fall apart? No, it just dries out. So the uh -huh. seams become more open. Fair enough. And then you put it back in and you would have water coming in until the planks swell up, becomes tight, and off they go. That would be a little bit terrifying to be inside a boat as the water comes in. That happens to my boat. If I take it, every year I take it out so I can paint it and check the bottom. And then when they bring the boat back and they plunk it down into the water, all the water starts coming in and it's leaking and the bilge pump has to kick the water out. And it's, yeah, the first time it happened, it was really scary because I thought there were holes in my boat. But then after a couple of hours, the wood swole back up and it stopped all the leaks and all the water stopped coming in. But it happened that fast? Yeah, just a couple hours. What's a bilge pump? Oh, I'll let him answer. A bilge pump uh, <laughs> takes the excess water that you don't want in the bottom of your boat and puts it out over the edge. Uh, that makes sense. The bilge is the lowest point in the boat. Because everything point. seems to collect at the bottom of a boat. Ah, uh, okay. Water does run, run downhill after all. One would hope. <laughs> We're talking capillary action and how trees grow, but that's a biology lesson, which uh, is that's fair. fascinating. I think that's science seven, I believe. <laughs> nice. Uh, very cool. Yeah. Well, that's that's amazing. So when you're talking about getting a seam that tight, unless you have like, a, do you have a lot of tools that you use for that, or is it just one or two tools that that allow you to get that kind of precision? Uh, the hand plane is the favorite, and there are many styles of hand plane. This is one that I've shown you, and so it uh, it's got the the tote handle here and the knob handle here, and you push the thing, and then. There's a, there's a blade in here, which sticks out. Uh, try and not get the light, here it goes. The blade <laughs> sticks out here. Yeah. And, uh, and so you can adjust it in order to take off shavings that are so thin, they're almost see-through. That's incredible. And do you, um, for, for tools like that, do you have to take care of them or do they just, they're, they're, once they're set, they're good? We, we sharpen them as, uh, as we need them. And uh, sometimes that's a couple times a day. Sometimes that's more often, depending on what you do. Sharpening uh, a plain iron only takes a couple minutes and then back into the plain iron and reset the tool and off you go. Plain, is plain iron like the blade of the? The blade, that's right. Okay, yeah. nice. And so do you, when you're building like a boat, like we saw that video where it's this huge boat. Um, do you do that by hand? Like how much of that is done with machines and how much is done by hand? A lot of it's done with machines, um, and that that makes it easier for me to keep going, uh, mostly on my own. Um, and uh, I started with chainsaws, and I used power drills, I used skill saws, and then a power planer. So the same thing, like this, but with a cord coming off the end. <laughs> Goes a little quicker. They are a little dangerous, but they do make things a little easier. Fair enough. Yeah, there. I I always have. I've used a power planer when I was building houses and we were putting big beams in. And the thing about them that always terrified me was the noise. Like it's, they're so loud, but then once they start going, there's shavings flying everywhere. It's, it's almost like confetti. Um, mm -hmm. Do you find when you're building a boat, um, where do you find the trees? Like where do you find the wood for it? Um, many different Sawyers where they have uh, larger machines than I own, which is for taking a tree and turning it into planks. And, um, 
Uh, from then, I usually take the boards, which are flat and square, and then I can manipulate them and turn them into the curved shapes of wood that I need. That makes sense. Yeah. And is there like, where do you do you, all the trees that you use or all the wood? Where does it come from? Like, and what kind of trees do you use? Well, I use Douglas fir, the same as we build our houses with here. That's I my floors. That's what your floor is. <laughs> I use yellow cedar, which is a very rot resistant, resilient wood. I use red cedar, which is the same, resilient, rot resistant. We also have Gary Oaks around here. We have Pacific Yew around here. And then we also have import trees, which aren't domestic, but other people have planted. So various things show up um, that we are then fortunate that we can use. Amazing. What about yeah. your masts? Where did the wind for your masts oh, come yeah. from? <laughs> we had a windstorm back in January and uh, a tree fell on my shop. Oh and, no! Uh, and the corner stood tall and the tree was at a bit of an angle, but I managed to get it down and it's uh, the right diameter for a uh, mast for my boat. So <laughs> it's That's incredible. pretty much delivered to my back door. Yeah, no, there's no shipping fees with that one. No, <laughs> no, it was good. And I'm glad your shop stood up. That would have been scary. Me too. Yeah. 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 That's, that's cool. And so for your, for your, I guess it's a career, you, you're a boat builder. Um, do you, do you have to, it's a lot of school studying or do you learn it on the job? Like how do you, be, how do you become a boat builder? Um, I'm always interested in reading. I'm always interested in picking up what other people do. Uh, I love watching other people's hands and um, you can learn a lot of information uh, from watching somebody work. I did uh, six months of uh, training at boat school uh, to learn how to build boats. And then I've been practicing on the job since then. That's amazing. That's so cool. Did you, yeah. Did, so I wanted to make sure that we had a chance to hear from, from everybody else on the call. That, does anyone have any questions for Trevor and Jesse? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I had, I had one question because you have this like amazing boat in your shop and it's uh, I think it's uh, so I'm on your right so it's that side oh maybe Bonnie had a question oh so oh. <laughs> no go ahead Jordan all right um, so you've got this amazing boat and it's on frames and such whose boat is this like what did, where did it come from? Why, why are you building it? Um, I'm building it because I want to. I'm building it out of interest. I've been collecting wood and uh, ballast materials, bolts, um, screws, fasteners, and uh, corking supplies, paint. I've been doing that all over the last 20 years since I got to the coast. And uh, so the conditions are right now and I have started uh, a little a little while ago, but I'm uh, um, daily like to add something to it because it grows into something more. So yeah. when it's done, I'll take it to the water and take it sailing. Amazing. And uh, is it, so is boat building, it's, it, is it a team career, like something you do with many people or is it something that you do a lot on your own? Um, boat building goes much, much quicker when you do it with the team. Fair enough. And, uh, and for example, the blue nose that's uh, on the dime that you might have in your pocket uh, was built in six months with a huge crew at 125 feet long. So if you oh. want to put a boat together and you're willing to hire the crew, it goes along very quickly. For me, yeah. I'm just a guy and I'm working and feeding people. And so in the evenings, I put a couple hours in and keep going with what I want to do. Amazing. Yeah, I imagine that when they built the blue, blue nose, they didn't have a power planer either. So they probably can do it in three months now. <laughs> That's cool. Amazing. And like, what, what do you look for? Like when you hire somebody to help you out, what do you look for? Is it a skill? Is it an, like a, the right attitude? The, Personal the, attributes. Oh, yeah. I need to be able to get along with people. And I'm quite happy to teach anybody. And I'm quite happy to learn from anybody because skills are transferable. But your personality, keep that up. <laughs> Fine to everybody. Fair enough. Amazing. Well, that's so cool. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this today. Is there, um, yeah, is there anything, anything else that, um, that you wanted to share? 
Oh, yeah, about your power plane questions and uh, your hand plane questions and where do I get my wood? Um, I buy planks because we can make them these days and somebody else does that. The Vikings built boats and they built them with axes. They didn't, they didn't go run around and get boards. They made their boards. So all of it can be done with hand tools. They continue to replicate those in Denmark. Um, building them the old fashioned way just with axes is uh, a lot of work and with more work comes more value it's nice to have things of value true and i imagine when you build a wooden boat you're building it for a lifetime it's not just a not like the paper boats which will maybe last an hour <laughs> <laughs> my paper boat sunk i uh no. Yeah, well, it's tricky because like the water, I don't think paper expands to keep water out. I think paper absorbs water to sink. And so <laughs> even even with all of my tape, it sunk. And then my beautiful boats, boats uh, ended up being boats, bats. Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Which is not necessarily. And then, yes, so it was, it was a fun project, but I think next time I'm going to try and make it out of wood. I would actually, that would be tricky. If I was to turn it into a wooden boat, how would I connect it? Would I nail it or glue it or what would you do? Yes, that sounds good. There are, <laughs> lots, of <varieties. laughs> there are lots of varieties to put wooden boats together with. And uh, the methods that I'm using are screws and bolts. Um, some people use glues. Um, and even in the northern parts of Canada, they would just make a wood frame and add a skin. You know, it's it's a, oh. it's a whole other way to keep the water out, so. You almost would sew, sew your boat together. You would sew it together and then you would cover it in fats over the seams where the holes were and, That's and very cool. our canoes the same, covered with fats on the holes. Yeah, I, I grew up in water. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. The people are so in, in, ingenuitive, innovative, mm -hmm. ingenious, one of those words. That's amazing. Well, thanks. Thanks so much for your time. If nobody else has questions, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Um, but yeah, and yeah, so thanks for sharing your boat, boat yard and, and thanks for doing the videos and for, yeah, for talking to us today. Um, it's really exciting to see. I, I now want to come visit your shop and see this amazing boat that you've got. <laughs> yeah, I'll, bring, I'll bring my plane. Nice. That sounds good. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, thanks very much for all your questions. And um, it would be awesome to hear more questions. And I hope you see boats with new eyes. Sounds good. So if people have other questions, can they maybe they can email them to me and then I can pass them on to you. Or that sounds you... great. Perfect. Okay. So then maybe we'll get more questions this week. Amazing. Well, thanks so much again for your time. Thanks, Jordan. Have an excellent day. Bye. Bye. Bye.